Changing up a superhero's look is always an exciting time. Some people will love it. And some people will hate it. That's just how it goes. I'm Amanda, and today on Top 10 Nerd, we're gonna talk about the top 10 bizarre superhero outfits that actually worked. At least to us. Let us know your favorite underrated superhero looks down in the comments below. Number 10, Thor from the 90s. Around the time of the Avengers crossover event, The Crossing, pretty much all of the Avengers got new costumes. And even though Thor was not directly tied in into the actual event, he absolutely did too. All the costumes here were very over the top, and that was definitely the case with Thor. With endless belts, pouches, oversized shoulder pads, complete with a giant metal cod piece, plus long chains out of nowhere for his hammer, he looks a lot like many other characters from the 90s, but he doesn't particularly look like Thor outside of Mjolnir. But at the same time, I actually kind of like it. I think if this costume had been worn by a wholly different character, it may have been a bit more acceptable, but I do agree without the hammer, you may not recognize this as Thor. The funny thing is, Thor didn't even wear this costume really. Despite being shown in promotional materials as his new look, he didn't actually wear the costume, instead running around shirtless for most of the time that he was supposed to be wearing this new outfit. When he returned after temporarily passing away with the rest of his teammates during Onslaught, he was back in his traditional costume. Number nine. Spy D. Okay, so this is actually not the name of this look for Miles, nor is it actually a name that we use for this character today. But for a while, Marvel actually considered changing a superhero name from just Spider Man to Spy D. Ugh. I'm not joking guys, this is a real thing. And equally bizarre I think is this costume change that we saw Miles get a few years back. After his black and red spider suit was destroyed, one of Miles' friends in the comics, a young sort of up and coming clothing designer, decided to make him a replacement suit. I mean. At least it has a reason for existing, and it does actually look really comfy. I personally would wear this, but you know, maybe not to fight crime in. Number 8. Dark Claw. I do not believe that it is all wrong to call the DC Marvel Amalgam character Dark Claw just a little bit bizarre. This character is a beloved mix of DC Comics' Batman, The Dark Knight, and Cape Crusader mixed with Marvel's resident angry Canadian, Wolverine. It was not only an incredibly smart move by both companies to try this, but it's just an insanely awesome build for a comic book character. It's shocking that it wasn't done before or expanded upon since. Either way, it happened when it happened and the outfit worn by Logan Wayne is all kinds of ridiculous. It's got far too many large pointy parts, like mixing the cowl of Batman with the cowl of Wolverine to give us a cowl that looks like it would be problematic to wear at best. The belt looks like it would be the absolute worst, and the cape is just a tiny bit humongous, complete with pointy shoulders that I feel would also get in the way of this clawed martial artist's daily operations. But I will absolutely never pretend that this isn't the most awesome thing I have ever seen in a very long time. Number 7. Power Girl A lot of people give Power Girl a hard time for having her cut out in her costume. People for years have seen this as an objectification of the character, and while this might have been true, actually initially, Power Girl at least has been given the opportunity to own this part of her costume. At one point they even give an explanation in the comics for why the cutout exists other than the initial real world reason of just really objectifying her, which co-creator Wally Wood even admitted to, saying that he actually drew her bust larger and larger intentionally until DC had to ask him to stop. In JSA Classified Issue Number 2, Power Girl explains that the window represents, in a way, her lack of identity or motivation she feels she has as a hero. She wanted a symbol like Superman's at that spot in her costume, but wanted to find her own symbol to represent who she was. She didn't want to copy others related to her by giving herself the same S that both Supergirl and Superman wear, but at the same time she struggled to figure out what that symbol should be for herself, what it and what she wanted to represent. And she even talks about how the hole in the costume kind of is like representing a hole inside herself, if that makes sense. Now, while some have made fun of this explanation, saying she could have just covered up and left a blank white spot on her outfit where her chest is, I actually kind of like it for Power Girl, who is a character that has often struggled with living in the shadow of other super family members' identities. Number six. Azrael Batsuit. When Azrael took over as Batman in the 1990s following the Nightfall story and Batman having his back cracked in half by the villain Bane, the idea by Batman editor Denny O'Neill was to show just how the real Batman was so much better than some quote extreme hero, which was what people in the 90s seemed to be completely obsessed with. All this to say that Azrael's Batman was intentionally over the top to prove this point. Starting as just another Batman suit, he still upped the ante by giving the gauntlets claws. 
very edgy, literally. But as he went on as Batman, he got more and more extreme, and so did his costume. With a blue, black, and gold color scheme, the suit became more armor-like, loaded up with pouches, huge bladed gauntlets, a blue bat helmet with red glowing eyes. The cape gained massive pointed shoulders. Time kept going on and so did Azrael's grip on reality until he replaced the blue of his suit with red, added multiple spikes onto his cape's shoulder area, and made his cape appear more wing-like with multiple different strands of fabric. The only problem with all of this is I think it actually looks really freaking cool. Maybe I'm crazy, but it's just super awesome. When DC brought him back as Batman for Tales from the Dark Multiverse Batman Nightfall story, they made a more subtle change to his look that felt more in line with the character's own history and affiliations, and every single one of the suits he has worn as Batman, to me, not only look really cool, but they also are really good storytelling devices. Number five, Vampirella. When it comes to Vampy, there are many people who take issue with her outfit. And while for someone like Red Sonia, who literally is a barbarian running around in a chainmail bikini, I get the complaints regarding the skimpy outfit in terms of practicality, I think for someone like Vampirella, her look actually does make sense and even actually works to her benefit. Vampy is a vampire who, depending on the origin you prefer, either came from a planet of space vampires vampires, or came from basically hell, being the daughter of the biblical Lilith. Vampires thematically tend to be used to explore the themes of promiscuity, repression of physical desires, and empowerment in regards to one's body, the use, control, and manipulation of it. So as a vampire alone, I actually think this outfit really works. But then you also consider that this costume was designed in the late 60s by a woman who was also part of the underground comics movement, Trina Robbins. Robbins throughout her career has been involved in feminist writings and art, and has also promoted the idea of women reading comics and getting involved in the comic book industry. As such, I've always seen Vampy's initial costume as one that represents women owning and loving their bodies and the deadly allure of the vampire. Number 4, War Machine The Crossing. War Machine is plagued by an issue that not a lot of other comic book characters have to deal with, that being that his character was a spin-off of a much more popular hero. Iron Man. War Machine's armor was a more obviously combat inclined Tony Stark designed version of Iron Man's armor, and during the 90s and his solo series, Marvel wanted to distance the character from Iron Man. Stark just happened to be the villain of the Avengers The Crossing event that we just talked about with Thor, and because of that, Rhodey could not get another suit of armor from him after losing his original armor. So instead, he was chosen by a race of warrior aliens known as the Eidolon, I think is how you pronounce it, to wear a special armor called Warwear, and funnily enough, it was because of his connection to Stark. This armor was intentionally designed to look very alien, and it succeeded in that. It was really weird looking, like just look at it. And yet, here I am to say, while it was super strange, it is also kind of really cool and it definitely pushes the character's look way off from Tony Stark and his armors. The colors, the build of it, its capabilities, the fact that it looks almost organic, how the helmet only covered half of his head, it's all so different from Stark and is incredibly unique in general. Fortunately, or fortunately depending on your preference, Rhodey gave up the war wear by sacrificing it to erase all information about the Iron Man technology from Stark Enterprises servers. Number 3, Black Bolt. Oh my goodness, I love Black Bolt, but I cannot get over the tuning fork on his head. Overall, I would say his costume is pretty cool and sleek, although it kind of looks like it would be challenging to get into, honestly. Is Black Bolt bald, by the way? I don't think he is. If he's not, he must have to smooth his hair down every morning and then like put a cap on before he pulls the suit on over his head. I'm not sure what exact textile his suit is made out of, but I can't imagine covering your hair in this way every day would be good for it or comfortable. People say wearing hats constantly is actually not good for your hair, so I can imagine a suit with an attached head cap, head piece, head mask would be even worse. However, when it comes to Black Bolt, his little glider wings and his tuning fork actually do make some sense in terms of his powers and his character. His tuning fork actually helps him to channel his powers, giving him greater control, and his little glider wings attached to his arms would actually make it easier for him to move around when he's flying. Because yeah, Black Bolt can actually use his speech-centered electron manipulation powers to also fly. So, yeah. Number 2, Electric Blue. In 1996, Superman had absorbed a massive amount of energy and attack from an 
enemy. He survived the ordeal, but strangely enough, the robots at the Fortress of Solitude no longer recognized his DNA as Kryptonian. Superman then also temporarily lost his superpowers as part of a crossover called Final Night, where the Earth's sun was extinguished. Ultimately, the sun was reignited, and when he went to charge up and get his powers back, his powers began changing. He became much faster. His invulnerability now became intangibility. His x-ray vision displayed the electromagnetic spectrum. His super strength became him magnetically lifting things, and he gained the power to emit electricity. The downside was that he ended up becoming supercharged with solar energy to the point where his body could no longer process it in a way it used to, and he basically imploded into a mass of energy. Luckily though, he was saved by wearing an energy containment suit created by Emil Hamilton and Lex Luthor. He was now able to control his vastly different powers, but he required the suit to stay intact. The suit itself is not bad at all. I actually really like the look of this super suit. He looked awesome. The problem is, this is Superman. Changing him in such an absolutely drastic manner did not go over well with fans, and eventually those powers went away and he went back to the status quo as all comic characters do. But he still looked pretty cool. Just saying. Number one, Peacemaker. Probably the weirdest and wildest costume out there is Peacemakers. The live action Peacemaker series doesn't even hesitate to make fun of the look as early as the first episode. But while Peacemaker's costume may seem ridiculous, and don't get me wrong, I know it is, there's no argument there, it is also extremely iconic and memorable. The white pants, the weird toilet seat shaped helmet. In the comics, Chris's helmet is also more than just a stylish accessory. It is also a device that he uses to talk to, well, ghosts. The ghosts of those that he's killed and the ghost of his father. However, it's also been implied that this is less the helmet's doing and more Chris's mind and PTSD that are making him think he's talking to ghosts. Still, I feel like for who Peacemaker is, this suit while silly, actually works really well for the character. And I'm also really glad that they pretty much adapted it one for one for live action. It's great. Alrighty, that's about it for this list, or is it? Part two, anyone? I feel like we should have talked about Blue Beetle, honestly. It's it got a weird should one have too. Actually, yeah. Well, until we come back and talk about Blue Beetle, mm -hmm. you stay nerdy, YouTube. Bye. Bye.